Good afternoon, everyone. Um, coming to join me now on stage are uh, the lovely. I know the names, are, so I just need to see them. <laughs> Ross Moses Mutabaraka, founder of Tech Media, Seth Onyango, senior writer at Bird Story Agency, and Binja Basmige, gentlemen and lady, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Today we are going to be talking about the elephant in the room as it were. What does it really take to tell better stories about Africa? We all know that African Filters advocacy is centered around telling better stories about Africa, but what does it actually mean and how have you guys done it? Before we start, please introduce yourself and tell everyone about the wonderful platforms that you work for. So I'll start with this lady first for sure. Um, hi everybody, Habali, Mkwaye, Salva, Shababel Bincha, Moshi Lepog, 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 My name is Bincha Basubike, I run the Adwoman Media. Um, we are a digital media agency that focuses on amplifying the voices of African women, and we do this because um, it is beyond high time for African women to not only be seen, but heard and heard loudly. Thank you. Hello everyone. Abai. Murao. Kwanathia. My name is Ras Mutamarika. Uh, I'm the founder of TAP Media, the parent company for TAP Magazine and TAP Media Agency. Um, a media platform I founded about eight years back, um, after being frustrated in how Africa and Africans were being portrayed in media. Uh, I was born in Rwanda, uh, I was a refugee in Congo, Tanzania, but I grew up in Kenya. So I went to primary school in Kenya, I went to high school in Kenya. I grew up not too far from here, loving to not, or a place called Kawangwari, if you know, you know. Um, and, and, and when I went to Uni in Canada, it was the first time I was experiencing media, and I was very frustrated with how when I said I was from Kenya, the whole lion thing, the whole other, other. when I said I was from Rwanda, people start crying, it was a dead Rwanda. Um, and then during my academics, I, the professors, the other students, Africa would come up, and everybody would just go south. Uh, and so when I graduated, I was frustrated, and being someone that always hated feeling uh, helpless and complaining. I was like, if these media companies are telling these stories, mm -hmm. let me start and tell different stories. Storytelling was not sexy at the time, and being here, I feel like we've arrived. At least there's many of us in the room. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Barry. Um, so my name is Sato Nyango. I'm a writer for Bird Story Agency. Uh, which is a specialist news agency of African Future uh, that produces nuanced alternative content about the continent that we all love. So what we do is to present Africa as home to normal, rational, loving people. Uh, so we tend to do stories that capture and reflect these lives. Thank you. Um, there is, does anything but hard news. So when you read a bit story, you're not going to encounter poor dying, starving Africans, right? And I think that's the important so the common thing that we all have is different content, but there's that particular stereotype that tends to come out and it mentioned that you want to talk about the Tell us more about these stories, the type of stories you tell about African women, and why it's important to have them. Yeah, um, so I'm a recent diaspora. I was listening to um, the previous uh, group that came as well. I'm actually half Kenyan, half Congolese. And when I moved to Kinshasa, um, the first thing that I, I realized was after having been a consultant in tech for about eight years in Boston, I'm such a podcast head and I love stories. I love just kind of sitting and learning about people. And I was looking around for podcasts because I was like, okay, so I'm home. Who is sharing stories? 
Um, and when I was looking for stories, I was looking for stories about African women because I'm saying, but I want to find bosses like myself. Where are these women? And I couldn't really find a place where we could hear stories that were Pan-African, right? Everybody claims to be Pan-African, but when you boil down to it, people are not really as Pan-African as they say. And so for me, I said, well, okay, so there seems to be a gap. And so for a year and a half, I didn't want to be nobody's white savior. I took a break. I kind of sat down, listened. Um, asked questions, figured out, okay, so what is actually missing in the market? And what was missing that we found was there wasn't a place where people can go to hear about stories um, by African women, for African women, to the world, right? Um, and so what we did was we created our own table. We do not center men. <laughs> it's from the one and only time you hear me talk about men. Um, and uh, for us, it was really important to tell these stories because if you're a little girl in Kisumu, Kisumu is Western Kenya, and you want to hear about what um, the head of data analytics in Swaziland is doing and how she got to that position, um, how do you do that? There is no Forbes Africa that is finding a thousand stories. And so what we did was we said, well, we will create podcasts. We will find people who do YouTube videos and vlogs, and we will support women who are telling their stories. So the first thing we did, we launched a podcast. It is called A Series of Ands, because we are more than one thing. Um, and what we do is we talk to African women. So this is going to be our third season, and we've talked to women in over 30 countries. And it's important because a woman in Libya sharing her story versus a woman in Kenya versus a woman in Rwanda. Um, at the end of the day, when we hit that point of, so how did you decide for university? Everybody says the same thing. My father wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, a teacher. And you're like, oh, so we all have the same fathers. We just don't know it. Um, and so what it was really important for that little girl to know that, you know, these people in the C-suite, uh, because that's usually our target market for a series of our podcasts, is it, it's a, it's a team. Like the idea that you're this one, you know, this unicorn. Um, we wanted to shatter those stereotypes. That there are more of us that are actually killing the game than we get um, credit for. So thank you, thank you so much. It's so important to actually see ourselves as we are, right? To be fully represented in the stories that we read, because they shape perce perceptions, they influence what we believe and think of ourselves and each other. Raz, what's your better story that you tell? What's the best story that you're taking to tap? I want the audience to get a sense of your content and the amazing work that you do. Yeah, so um, we've told multiple stories. I think we've told stories from 15 African countries in the last four years. Uh, one of our most popular series is a series called Homecoming, where we profile young, enterprising African youth from the diaspora that have moved back to the continent and who are doing impactful work. Uh, so we've just wrapped up season three uh, and broadcast on Deutsche Welle. Um, we also just finished working on our issue 18 of that magazine, uh, which was the largest body of work uh, on podcasting in Africa. We worked with ANF and an organization called AfriPods. Um, yeah, we are passionate about So our mission is to rebrand Africa one story at a time. I'm always joking to Natasha that a and F store our slogan. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that we we are passionate, committed to telling better, diverse, encompassing stories of Africa and where they are. We will find them. We will go to Somalia. We will go to Sudan. We will go to Botswana. We will go and have fun in Accra. Um, yeah. Amazing. Said, so, Bird works differently. It's a news agency. Um, take us back to why it was so important to have an agency created. Um, I think it's very important because, first of all, uh, the, one of the lies that has been perpetrated by uh, legacy media is that, the, is that the challenges we have in Africa is because we are Africans. And so what we try to do with that is to populate the internet um, with as many positive stories about the continent as possible, so that when you're searching for information about the continent, uh, you don't just come across politics and war and all those kind of, kind of things. And so, while we may talk about war, we have to talk about context. Because without context, then everything is chaotic. Yeah. So, if they say uh, war in Sudan, you know, there are midwives that are helping pregnant women uh, 
deliver self impaired kids safely. And those are stories that during war, legacy media will not focus on those stories. So Bart comes in and he says, hey, wait a minute. There's a lot going on, but there's a story that needs to be told that is different from what folks are getting from BBC and CNN and all that. And the good thing is that uh, I think when Blood was being founded, um, there was a research that was done and it shows that most of most African newsrooms consume uh, a lot of data, uh, data-driven stories from, uh, uh, from news sources that are not our own. You know, and that's what we try to, to, to change, to ensure that we feed people with positive stories about the continent. Not just positive, but authentic stories about the continent that inspires confidence in the continent. Uh, so that when people come here, they know that there's a lot going on. And Africa is not just one huge national pathway, which you come to see lions and, um, and, and, and giraffes and all that. That is good, but there's so, a lot going on. I mean, Nairobi has been just been named that is one of the most beautiful cities to visit in 2024. Those are stories that need to be amplified. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You guys have had such amazing impact when we were talking about the amount of work you've done, almost making sound easy. I want to know what have you had to put in to find these stories because the perception is also generally speaking that it's harder to reach people to say, um, we're looking for positive African stories, we're looking for better African stories, and that mainstream media will tell you about where to find them. So how do you guys find them? Yeah, so, so what is happening now is that uh, social media has sort of collapsed the fence and African stories are competing for eyeballs with stories from all over the world. So it's not just enough to tell stories, but how we package it. So our offering should have an entertainment component because right now we have folks that want to get entertained, they want, they're, on, uh, they're on Instagram and, and other platforms like uh, TikTok and therefore Stories about Africa, especially that talks about really pertinent issues like governance and all that. We need to be able to get to these people uh, in a way that ensures that they, they, they remain on the story and they're able to, 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 to engage with the story and not just publish the story and put it online and hope that or well, someone is going to come and, 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 and read those stories. So, so um, for that we have uh, a network of about 100 clients, these are news outlets that get content from us, which is very important, and there are different platforms. Some of them post these stories on social media, like one of the most beautiful stories that we published uh, not so long ago was about this man who makes uh, protest uh, prosthetics for uh, people with dark skin tones, and, and I think when, when, when you look at that story, it's a story of hope, and it shows that there's a lot of uh, innovation that is going on on the continent. And another story was a story like, uh, it, was a, it was a story about uh, a, a, a guy in Congo who had, uh, who had made a wooden treadmill. Yeah. So that in and of itself is a, it's a very entertaining story. I mean, if you see this guy walking on a treadmill that is propelled just by, the, 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 you know, like uh, natural mechanics, and people see that story like, oh, there's a lot of innovation and it's a different kind of innovation. It doesn't have to be big tech innovation for it to be a big, beautiful story about the country. Yeah. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about money. Does telling better stories translate into financial sustainability? You can go first, Ninja. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I would say eventually, yes. I, I like to be very, very honest. Uh, I like to be humble open, and transparent, as they say. Um, and so for us, when we started, we were completely self-funded. Um, my co-founder is actually a Liberian woman. Um, and so the two of us came together and we were just so focused on ensuring that all of these women's stories were told and were told in the level of excellence. So if you go on our website, you, we hope that you agree with us that we did put in the right amount of work, I think. Tony was talking about how they hired designers, etc. So it was literally just the two of us putting ourselves together saying we need to have an excellent product. Um, and so money like is correlated with excellence <laughs> in a lot 
of what it means to, to be in production. Um, and so we went from being self-funded, um, worked with uh, Microsoft, I think they're startups, um, and we got um, some resourcing for them. But at the end of the day, like you need money. Um, how you get that money, um, how we want to continue to stay sustainable, I want to just come extend your question here, is through sponsorships and through the right types of partnerships. Um, we don't accept all money. Um, it has to obviously align with our ethos. But at the end of the day, yeah, sponsorships, um, self-funding, and just grant writing is, is kind of how we've been able to sustain that far. Um, I think getting better stories definitely uh, makes money. Um, there was a conversation yesterday about how news and news media reporting is shifting to more constructive, more uh, positive or more balanced storytelling. So I think when we started we were really, really struggling. I'll give a, a short example. The one of the big media, actually Al Jazeera, I pitched them a story about you don't have a presence in Africa, they didn't at the time, you need to tell better stories about Africa, you need to be on the ground. First forward, three years ago they reached out with the same idea and reached out to them and like oh we need creatives and filmmakers to produce this new series called Africa Direct uh, told by African filmmakers and we were like to be first one of the first people to be commissioned we've done like three stories with them uh, we've created three seasons on uh, with Deutsche Vela. we have our work on CNN we've done some doing some work with uh, Netflix um, also like Africans online and offline have said that we don't need the New York Times and the likes to pilot in and tell our stories. Uh, and so there's more and more there's an opportunity to, for us to own the stories, to benefit from the stories. I think, of course, being a creative, being a storyteller is hard. Money is, the business model of media and news is generally broken, but I think on the continent, and especially with better stories, we're on the right side for the future. That's very encouraging. Thank you. Um, last word, we're almost out of, out of time. I just want to know what you imagine the future of your storytelling platform to be. Like, what's your evolution going to be, right? Because I imagine you're growing more. Yeah, so for us, um, our future is actually in about two months. Um, we're going to be onboarding more podcasts, more um, women who are telling their stories. We're going to be onboarding a health tech podcast by an oncologist in Nigeria, um, an arts and culture podcast by a creative, she's a documentarian in Kigali. Um, we have a Zimbabwean who's going to be running our finance podcast as well. And so basically for us, the future is continually extending ourselves in this Pan-African model of having these boss ladies tell their stories and bring in others into the fold where, you know, stories begin, stories begin, stories. And the only way, I think somebody said this yesterday, the only way we change how our stories are told is to tell better stories, right? And so um, we've hopefully increased funding, more open borders, um, visas, child, and formally. So I, I can only keep praying for that to also be something that in the future changes for us. But yeah, eventually we really just do want to continually expand um, all the platforms in which we touch uh, the women that we're talking to and obviously by default the men that we're talking to as well. Uh, for us, when we started, or when I started, we, we had a Facebook node, became a blog, and then one of my mentors was like, you're doing too much, you need to do one thing. And so because I'm, I was poor, I decided, I decided to do a magazine where every month we yeah, every quarter would put out a magazine and so at the time we were like, oh, you know what, we want to be the Forbes magazine for Africa. And so I would go to these stores and I would see where Forbes was and I would put tap there and I would step back and look. Um, five years later I think we want to build a Disney for Africa uh, where we own and hold the pen for our stories. That's the mission. Thank you. Good luck with that. Uh, I think for Bird Story Agency, uh, the future for us is really to become the go-to place uh, for uh, authentic African stories. So we'll try to get to as many countries as possible. And by there, you guys, um, uh, you can become a subscriber um, uh, for bad content. Uh, we offer it for free. And you, if you feel like you want, there's a story that you want to tell, you can get in touch with us. We're always looking for people that will tell them these amazing African stories. Uh, but I think uh, still on that, I think we, we are, we're trying to just create a chain reaction. So um, Africa.
African stories are told beyond Africa because here yeah, we can make a mark here but at the same time if traditional media in the West keep pumping negative stories about the continent then that is not going to change. Absolutely, thank you so much. Uh, we, <coughs> we have wrapped up this panel. Thank you for a lovely conversation. Really encouraging to know that you know, the continent is standing up, we are telling our own stories, we're telling them better, yeah, differently, but, and what's even more encouraging is that now is the moment, right, the solutions journalism is getting momentum, audiences have bad news fatigue thanks to COVID, so if ever you wanted to tell a story that does not center poverty, disease, corruption, now is the moment. Thank you so much. Thank you.